our Rayfield School Bell. The day has begun. Let's get started. It is another wonderful day at Rayfield Family Literacy. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to acknowledge that we are beginning our beautiful, exciting counseling program. We are all excited because we are ready to move forward with our conferencing and counseling and dealing with anxiety, depression, and all of those feelings that we just need to handle. Well, everybody knows that we're in a pandemic, and even if we were not, we still have issues that we have to deal with as human beings. So let's talk about our Rayfield class curriculum for the counseling program over the next quarter. This is April. It is the beginning of the second quarter of the year. And so we have six weeks of activities that will take place in our counseling classes. So I just want to quickly share with you what that's going to be. So during the months of April, May, and June, we will be covering the following topics. We will have tons of tools to help us with feeling confident and coping with different types of emotional stress. For the first 
this week, we're going to deal with anger, anxiety, depression, and sad feelings. We're going to manage all of those feelings. So we're going to call it anger management, anxiety management, depression management, fear, and well, fear and sad are basically the same thing, but sad management is what they have here on the curriculum. So that's five days that we will talk during the first week of our counseling therapy about those feelings and coping skills to go along with them. Each class instruction is followed by class objectives, materials pertaining to the level of accommodations for specific students. So what does that mean? You know, everything at Rayfield is person-centered. So that means that I may have some things to talk about with one person and some different things to talk about with another person. Okay, so let's talk about week two. Week two, we're going to talk about appreciation, compassion, kindness, courage, and fairness. That's our curriculum for week two of our coping skills. Week three, we're going to manage confusion. We're going to manage loneliness. We're going to manage frustration. We're going to empower our students to feel confident going to learn how to deal with surprises in week three. Moving right along to week four. We will learn to identify things that we love about ourselves. Five things that I love about myself is our first order of information and our first lesson for week four. What does it mean to be respectful is the second lesson. What does it mean to be responsible is the third lesson. What does it mean to be polite? And finally, managing self-discipline. We've heard about that before. That's week four. Moving right along to week five, we're going to learn tips that will help us to be reliable. We're going to learn what it means to be sacrificial, self-sacrifice. Wednesday, which would be of that week, week five, we're going to learn what it means to be accountable. The fourth lesson for week five is how do I control myself? And then the fifth lesson in week five is what does it mean to be committed? Wow. I know that's a mouthful. Five weeks of curriculum in our next Order, we're already in it. So April, May, and June, we will be learning coping skills and how to deal, develop our character, and deal with emotional stress and behavior. I am so excited, guys. As you know, we're going to be staying later at school. We will be staying two hours later, and we will be learning coping skills. We will be learning anger management and emotional stress learning how to be a better person every single day is our goal here at Rayfield and now that we've moved into our counseling services we are so excited for all of you that will have the opportunity to participate in these services so let everybody know you won't be going home at 2 o'clock anymore. You won't be going up to 4. And we're excited to have you here and work on our coping skills and work on our emotional stress. And in this great curriculum that we will be learning about. Let's get ready to rumble, guys. It's exciting.
Friendly reminder, guys, today is the day that we will be receiving our vaccines here at Rayfield. So let's get ready, get outside to get our vaccine and be thankful that we have it right here at Rayfield. Let's begin with our Wednesday morning prayer. Heavenly Father, for waking us up this morning and letting us see a brand new day, we thank you. You have promised that when we dwell in the secret place of the Most High and shelter under the shadow of your wings, that you would guard and guide us and protect us and keep us. For you are our refuge and our fortress. Please put your hedge of protection around us and place a guard at our doors. Father, keep our hearts from fear and fill us with overflowing love and protection and peace that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's have a great day, Raphael. It's time to get our day started. Good morning, Raphael. It is a wonderful Wednesday here at Raphael, and we're getting our day started. The school bell has rang. How exciting! We are going to be having a lot going on today. Our vaccines will be taking place today here at Rayfield. It is Wonderful Wednesday. We're having music with Mr. Glenn. And of course, all of our wonderful classes and teachers and everybody's here to start us off with a great day. Our theme for this month is Spring Forward at Rayfield. And boy, are we excited about the curriculum, the lessons, and the activities that will take place this month. Guys, let's get ready. When we say Wonderful Wednesday, it is a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. Good morning, Rayfield. It is another wonderful Wednesday. I can even say a wacky wonderful Wednesday here at Rayfield. Wow, we're going to be talking about some very exciting things today. And I want you to know that to one week ago today, we were fortunate enough to have the CDC here for our vaccines. We were fortunate enough to serve 68 people. How exciting, Rayfield, as an agency. The Center for Disease Control and the Broward County Health Department have come together to provide our vaccine and we are so grateful and we're so thankful that they are here to share with us so thank you congratulations ray field as an agency for having this type of support to provide the shots the vaccine for COVID-19, for our community, and for our students here at Rayfield. Good morning. It is Wednesday morning, April the... It is April. 2021. And we're going to get our day started. Today's lesson, and of course, you know, we have life skills lessons all the time. The lesson today is the struggle between good and evil. We're going to talk today for a few minutes about goodness, about just being a downright good person. Being good and exhibiting goodness can be a battleground. Just because you decide to be good doesn't mean that everybody else is going to be good as well. Being good is a lifestyle. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen without a struggle. So don't just think you can wake up one day and say, I'm going to be good and not have any struggle at all. Because we are going to have a struggle when we want to be good. Some days it will be easy and some days it will not. When we choose a lifestyle 
It takes time. It takes talent. It takes work to obtain those things that we would like to obtain. So let me tell you a little story. One day, a poor little peasant girl came face to face with a statue. She stood and she stared at the statue. And then she went home to wash her face and comb her hair. The next day, she came back to the statue again. And she stared at the statue. And then she did it again. She went home and she washed her face and she combed her hair. This time, she mended her tattered clothing. Day by day, she began to change. She began to form a new and a graceful and a more refined look for herself after looking at the statue each day. Until she greatly reflected the statue herself. She transformed her appearance to look more like the statue. Just so is our everyday life and every day in our learning skills, in our life skills. We transform ourselves every day to look more and more like the person we want to be. Not only physically, but mentally, we challenge ourselves to look more and more internally like the person that we want to be. Many of us who are Christians say this is becoming Christ-like. And those of us who are not so religious say, I'm learning my life skills. Either way it goes, we're growing, we're changing, and we're becoming better. And we're obtaining goodness. It's not a one-day venture. It takes time to obtain goodness. I would like to remind you once more that earlier in the year, January, February, March, we were learning the fruits of the spirits. We learned about self-control. We learned about gentleness. We learned about love. And now we are learning about goodness. It's a process. It is a daily process. It is a commitment. It is a daily discipline, a daily application, a daily significant contribution to our health and well being. Every day, in some small way, in some very significant way, we are changing to become better when we say that we are going to obtain or learn about goodness. The reality is that as we progress, it is a steady kind of thing, slow and steady. We will have our ups and our downs. We will have our good days and our bad days. We will overcome good from evil. It will be a constant struggle, but we will significantly progress day by day. There's a Bible study that talks about the disciple Paul. And one of the things that he says is very true when trying to obtain and learn the life skill of goodness. This particular statement comes from Romans 7, 18, and it states, For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot always carry it out. It is a struggle. 
Now, it is a struggle is not a part of that scripture. Let me repeat Paul's statement once again. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot always carry it out. What a profound statement. And what a statement of honesty. I have the desire, but I can't always make it. So one day at a time, I will work toward my goodness. How is it possible for the human being to experience good overcoming evil? For these particular studies, as it relates to goodness, and we're going to continue them, we're going to work to understand how we can fight good with evil. We want to look at our life skills and we want to look at our goodness, the goodness that we have within ourselves, the desire to do better, the desire to learn more, the desire to be a good person. And I know that we all have that desire because every day here at Rayfield, we are working to become a better person. So as we continue to study our different character traits, this one on goodness seems to be one that really hits home. I have the desire to do good, but I cannot always make it. Let's look also at some of the things that we are doing here at Rayfield to become a better person. We are talking about every day our behavior management. We are participating in our guidance counseling. And some of you are working on counseling sessions with Mr. Devon. Some of you ladies are working on counseling sessions with Miss Cassie and more will continue. We will begin in, we will continue to enhance our job skills. We're going to be looking at, of course, on the job training. We do that with our piecework. We're expanding our computer classes. Of course, we do our local tours to businesses here in Hollywood. Most of the time now we do them virtually on Fridays. Remember that I said earlier in the week that this is library month. So we are visiting virtually our libraries and learning more about library media. We are also working on our different video productions. Boy, have we grown in this area. Our virtual tours, our virtual learning, our YouTube, our Facebook, all of the things virtually that we are learning through our technology here at Raytheon. Of course, we have enhanced our pantry jobs. We're just giving and giving and giving to this community. And that being said, today is Wednesday. And on Wednesday now, we give out food to our group homes, our caregivers, and our loved ones. We have been taking food home on our buses and in our cars to those who we want to share with. We have opened the doors of the community here at Rayfield to share with that unique group of people who are friends of Rayfield and who are sharing and caring for us. Let us move forward, Rayfield. Let, Let us continue. continue on this Wednesday, April 14th, as we take our vaccine, as we share our food to this community and to our caregivers. This is a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. And as you know, we are also working on the fact today that we are doing our vaccines, as I stated, and we will be moving forward with more vaccines on Saturday for the community. So for those of you who have not had the vaccine or those of you who need the vaccine, it is also available on Saturday. Again, guys, let's have a wonderful Wednesday. We know that there's a lot going on at Rayfield all the time. We are COVID-free. The vaccine is here. We are 
Ray feels strong, and we are springing forward in April. Have a great day, guys. Before I close out today, I have to give a shout out to some special people. As you can see behind me, that's Miss Vargas, Patricia Vargas, John, uh, Jimmy's mom, did a great job with helping us with the pantry. And here's Miss Wilma. Miss Wilma is our former pantry person who stopped by this weekend and left the donation for our students. Thank you, Miss Wilma. Good morning or afternoon, Rayfield family. Here are your weather forecasts for this week. Monday, partly to mostly cloudy with a chance of thunderstorms. High 86, wind south-southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, chance of rain 40%. Tuesday, sun and clouds mixed with a slight chance of thunderstorms during the afternoon. High 87, wind south southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, chance of rain 30%. Wednesday, partly to mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. High 86, wind southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour, chance of rain 40%. Thursday, intervals of clouds and sunshine. High 81. Wind north northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Friday. Except for a few afternoon clouds, mainly sunny. High around 80. Wind east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Saturday. Partly cloudy. High 84. Wind southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Sunday. A mix of cloud and sun with the chance of an isolated thunderstorm in the afternoon. High around 85. Wind south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chance of rain 30%. Monday. Intervals of cloud and sunshine. High 83. Wind southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. These are your weather forecast for this week. Keep your umbrella handy because some days we will have some rain in the forecast. Make sure that you keep yourself updated with the latest weather forecast 
as it will change from time to time by watching it from your television or listening from your radio or from any devices that carries their weather weather app. Thank you for tuning in and may you have a productive week. See you later. to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the So gallantly streaming, and the rocket red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag. Still there, oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the Nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Please pray along with me as we go to the Lord in prayer, going to Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye there. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen.
come on. Else's testimony about beside myself. So you've been so I see you, Betty Jackson. Been so good. Good to see you, girl. You've been so good. You've been so been so good. I have a right to vote. I have a right to vote. I have a right to see a doctor. I have a right to go to church. I have a right to humane discipline. I have a right to community outings. I have a right to talk. I have a right to education. I have a right to refuse treatment. I have a right to privacy and dignity. I have a right to make money. I have a right to exercise. I have a right to. Oh, sorry. I have, I have a right to see my records. records. I have a right to own possessions. I have a right to receive services. I have a right to no discrimination. I have a right to no physical harm. The resurrection of Jesus took everybody by surprise. The disciples weren't expecting it. They knew perfectly well if you followed somebody who you thought was the Messiah and he got killed, then that was it. We know of at least a dozen other messianic or prophetic movements within the hundred years either side of Jesus. They routinely ended with the death of the founder. Um, and if, they, if the movement wanted to continue, they didn't say, oh, he's been raised from the dead. They said, let's find his brother or his cousin or somebody who can carry on this movement. We can see how those Jewish groups did that. This one did it differently. They had James, the brother of Jesus, as this great leader in the early church. Nobody said James was the Messiah. They said Jesus was the Messiah. Why? He's dead. He, they, they got him. Didn't you realize they crucified him? No, he was raised from the dead. The only way you can explain why Christianity began and why it took the very precise shape it was is, let's say it cautiously first, they really did believe he was bodily raised from the dead. And then if you take the second question and say, why would they believe that? You can go through all the theories that they found themselves forgiven, that they had a fresh sense of the presence of God, that this was cognitive dissonance, etc. And you bring all those theories to the actual facts that we know on the ground from the first century. They just don't fit. The only way you can explain the rise of the early Christian belief that Jesus was raised is that there really was an empty tomb, they really did meet Jesus alive again in a transformed body, and the thing makes sense. Of course, when I wrote a big book on this, my philosophy tutor from Oxford, who was an atheist, um, uh, read it, and he said, great book, you really make the argument, he said, I simply choose to believe that there must be some other explanation even though I don't know what it was. I said, fine, that's as far as I can take you. I can't bully you into saying, therefore, you must believe, because to do that requires a change of worldview. But once you change the worldview and say, maybe there really is a creator God, and maybe this creator God really is sorting out this sad old world at last, then 
everything else makes sense in a way that it doesn't with any other possibility. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Wednesday, March 10th, 2021, and it is time for a conversation with God. Good morning to all of our prayer warriors who are joining us this morning from near and far. We know what time it is. This is a very special time for us to gather together uh, to spend time with our Father, sharing with him the things that uh, we, we love about him, let him know how grateful we are for who he is, all he has done, presenting our request to him for ourselves and for his mercy in the lives of others. God has done it again, y'all. He's blessed us. He's blessed us to be able to open our eyes to experience this day that we've never seen before and we will never see again. He watched over us last night, y'all. He protected us from all harm, hurt, and danger. How many of y'all know y'all had an angel watching over you last night? protecting you and, and, and providing for you. And he touched your, your, your eyes with that finger of love today and, and kept you breathing. And God, God is truly awesome, as the song says. And I truly love that song because it reminds us of the awesomeness of God. When you think about his goodness, when you think about his greatness, when you think about his works, you have to say and proclaim our God is awesome. How all of our, our prayer warriors doing, our friends doing this morning. If you are blessed this morning, write it in the comment section. Just say it. I am blessed. I am blessed. Go ahead and write that in the comment section. Let me know uh, how blessed you are this morning because we know that God is in the blessing business. As a matter of fact, all of us can say that we are blessed. You may not have the things that you want, but thank God you have what you need. And if you are alive, breathing this morning, and by virtue of the fact that you're even joining me uh, in this virtual world, uh, that's an example of just how blessed you are as one of God's beautiful, beautiful uh, creation. And again, we say good morning to all of our prayer warriors. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support this ministry. And I wanted to just take a moment just to commend each and every one of you uh, who are uh, have developed the, the, the discipline, I guess you could say, uh, of joining with us every morning, Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m. And you've been doing this for some time now. And I think that is commendable. Uh, it's one it's prayer, the habit of prayer, a prayer life is one habit that all of us need to uh, develop, being able to be consistent in our prayer lives. And because I think that's something that helps us to not only grow spiritually, but it helps us to, to really walk the walk and, and talk the talk as long as we remain, we remain connected with God through prayer. So I just want to commend each and every one of you who have been very consistent and joining. You know, you may miss from time to time or oversleep or whatever the case may be. But even if you don't connect with us, you know, in the morning when we go live, you, you make sure you check out the video during the day. But I just want to commend you uh, for your faithfulness and your commitment uh, to the discipline of, of prayer. And I hope and trust that it will be a a blessing to you. Um, as always, I invite and encourage you to leave your, your prayer requests in the comment section, and you all have been doing a great job of doing that. And I know the prayer warriors, you all have been praying for uh, one another uh, and, and taking these petitions to the Lord because God has been hearing our prayers, and I truly believe he's been answering our prayers in accordance with his will. And so please go ahead and, and, and leave your prayer requests in the comment section uh, if you are able to uh, for yourself uh, and for someone else that you know, love, and care about. For our devotion today, I'm going to ask that you turn to uh, Psalms 139. Psalms 139, verses 14 through 16. Psalms 139, verses 14 through 
16. Psalms 139, verses 14 through 16. And I'm going to uh, to ask that uh, please be aware that there, even in this time that we live in, there are scammers, you know, that are in the social media world on the World Wide Web. So you just you have to be very careful because I notice there are people that come into the comment section and they leave uh, information there, wanting people to you know call them or to send them certain things. I want you to be very mindful of that and be very aware that you cannot trust everybody. Do not give your information out on social media. Do not reach out to, uh, uh, to these individuals who are requesting these things. If you are in need, I, I encourage you uh, to reach out to your local authorities in your particular area. Uh, there are local churches in your community. There are local, local social services in your community, but do not come in our comment section requesting and asking these prayer warriors to send you things or to call you or to do any of those things because I encourage each and every one of you to protect yourself. Do not give out your information. Do not share your information with anyone uh, that requested that you do not know because there are people who are out there, unfortunately, who are looking to take advantage of, of you and me. So I just want to make that public service announcement so we can uh, all stay uh, together. Um, Psalms 139 verses 14 through 16. The Bible says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book, all my members were written, which is in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. I'm excited about this one this morning, y'all, as I am about all of them. But our tag and our title this morning is, I am God's masterpiece. I am God's masterpiece. If that's too much uh, for you to write, just write, I am awesome. Go ahead and write it in the comment section. Go ahead and write it on your heart. I am God's masterpiece. I am awesome. All right. Now, I, I always like to, to start every now and then with a question. Do you know your worth? Do you know? how awesome you are. Do you know that you matter to God? We live in a time and in a, a world where the enemy often uh, attacks and he tears down, um, he tears people down with negativity. You, you're too dark or you're too light or too, you're too short or you're too big or you're too small. Or you're not this or you're not that. You, you, you know, because you're black, because you're this, because you're that, people tear you down and they tell you that uh, and they try to get you to believe that you don't matter because you don't make enough money, because you don't come from this particular side of the track, because you don't have this amount of education. They, they try to make you feel like you don't matter. But when we look to God's word, one of the things that we can say, especially as the children of God, is that you matter. And not only do you matter, you are God's masterpiece. And I believe that the word of God backs us up on that, especially when we look at this text that the psalmist wrote here in Psalms 139. When you look at these words of the psalmist, he says, I will praise you. I will praise you, God. I will praise God. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Those words right there are saying a lot. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully means that I am awe-inspiring. In other words, when you have you ever taken the time to just look at your physical frame uh, in the mirror and just the fact that this machine, this human body, uh, it's, it's amazing in how it is designed, and, and it is designed 
to produce reverence for God. The number of hairs on your head and, and how your face is shaped and formed and your nose and, and, the, and all that it is, God designed that. And he designed it so when you look into the mirror and when you see yourself, it causes you and, and moves you to say, you know what? Our God is awesome. The fact that he could create something like this, he designed it, he developed it, he organized it, he produced it, and he gave it life. And not only that, not only am I fearfully made, he says, I am wonderfully made. In other words, by virtue of being a, a human being created in the image and the likeness of God, God has distinguished me from other created things. God has distinguished you from other created things. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're not like the animals. You're not, you know, people try to say you came from or evolved from apes and this. No, you're not even on the same level as those beings. You are distinguished by God, created in his image and his likeness. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, I know this. Turn over to Psalms 8. Verses four and nine. Psalms eight, verses four and nine. Psalms eight, verses four and nine. The Bible says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visited him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. God has crowned you with glory and honor. He's given you splendor. There's something magnificent about you. You are God's masterpiece. You're not just uh, uh, just existing. You were created with, with, with power. You were created with purpose. You were created with potential. You were created with value. And you matter to God. You matter to him. Look at your position and your station in this universe and, and God's creation. He said that you have made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him or her with glory and honor. You are God's masterpiece. You are awesome. And when I say you are awesome, what I'm saying is, that when you look at yourself and when the others see you, when we look at our bodies and we consider this creation, this, this being that we are, it is meant and it should drive us to say our God is awesome. Somebody once said that if you calculated <laughs> the value of the components of the human body, the human body would be worth at least $45 million. Can you believe that? And amazingly, but if you calculated the, the value and the worth of the chemicals or the, the elements that the body is made, somebody said it's uh, it's worth $160. All the chemicals, all the elements of that the body is comprised of are pretty much worth $160. But it amazes me that God can take some, some dirt <laughs> and, and shape it and form it into a human being and, and breathe the breath of life, giving it value and, 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 and worth. God can make something out of nothing. And you are somebody. You are something because you matter to God. You are God's masterpiece. And see, we need to understand that because, again, uh, when you think about what the enemy tries to do, how he tries to destroy us, you know, you got these images that are coming at you every single day telling you, you know, you're, you're not this, or you're not that, and you're too big, you're too small, you're black, you're this, that, or the other. But when you look at the word, when you look at what God says that you are, his word says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, consider this. Consider the complexity of the systems that are at work in your body right now the nervous system, the circulatory system, the digestive system, the immune system, the muscular system, the skeletal system, all these systems that are at work. <laughs> it has to move you to be like, my goodness. It has to move you to say, you know, the one uh, who created this, God, in his infinite 
uh, wisdom and power. He designed, organized, and constructed this masterpiece. Look at your mirror and say, <laughs> well, you should to see that. God did this. God created this masterpiece. And because he invested so much, he, he chiseled your, 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 your structure. And that's what the psalmist is talking about. In your mother's womb, he chiseled you and carved you out. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows your bone structure. And so if he knows you so uh, very well, if anybody can heal you, God can because he knows you. He knows you. He's intimately, intimately acquainted with your being. Thank God. Thank God. And when the world tries to uh, tear you down, just say, tell the world, or tell whoever it is, tell the enemy, I am God's masterpiece. Now, to think about this, when you know that you are God's masterpiece, you need to know that you are the apple of his eye and that you matter to God. And, you, and because you matter to God, you ought to matter to yourself. You got to take care of uh, uh, God's masterpiece. You got to take care of God's masterpiece. You got to take care of that temple that God is giving you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, in verse number 20, see, a lot of us don't recognize our, that we matter to God and that we uh, that we don't recognize our, our, our value or our worth, and we don't recognize and realize that we are God's masterpiece. But you got to take care of God's masterpiece. You are a manager. You are a steward of that body that God has given you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, in verse number 20, the apostle Paul is speaking to those who are Christian, the children of God, and he's letting them know that you, you don't just belong to yourself anymore. He says, for you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You're God's masterpiece. So use your body, use your mind to glorify God. Wow. Especially if you are a child of God. You know, God spent so much time developing you and, 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 and you know, uh, forming your the, the members of your body and the positioning, the, you know, every little hair uh, that's in your head right now. If you matter to God, you need to make sure that you matter to yourself. One of the reasons why in ways that we know uh, that we matter to God, the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus said in, during his ministry, greater love has no man than this, than a man would lay down his life for his friend. You matter so much to God that God was willing to sacrifice his only begotten son on the cross so that you and him could have a relationship again. You are God's masterpiece. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. When you wake up and you, you look at yourself in the mirror, remind yourself of who you are. And not only who you are, but what you are. I am God's masterpiece. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God knows my being. He positioned and made uh, and crafted everything there is about me. He gave me authority. He gave me dominion. He gave me power. He gave me purpose. He gave me talents, skills, and abilities that I have to use for his glory. Wow. When you look at yourself, it ought to make you say, our God is awesome. <laughs> because what he created is awesome. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you so much for being who you are the creator of the universe, the giver and sustainer of all life. When we consider your righteousness, your holiness, your purity, and we think about the fact that you took the time 
to create man, the human body. We praise you for that, Father. We recognize your splendor. We recognize your power. We recognize your, your, your majesty, even when we look at ourselves, knowing that we are created in your image and in your likeness. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this magnificent work that you created that we call the human body. All the systems that work within our within us, Father, that are, allow us to function in, and live for your glory and for your honor. And we know even though it's made from the dust of the earth and it will return to the dust of the earth, we thank you nonetheless for it, Father, that you've given us these earthly shells to, to carry out your will on this earth. Father, help us to remember that we are your masterpiece. When the world tries to tear us down and say that we don't matter and that we aren't nothing and, and, and because of who we are, where we live and, and the color of our skin and our, our gender, or whatever it may be, when the world tries to tear us down, Father, help us understand, understand and remember those things don't change who we are in your sight. It doesn't change the fact that, that we are, as your creation, as your children, the apple of your eye. It doesn't change your love for us. What the world says about us doesn't change your love for us. It doesn't change our value in your sight. And help us to never forget that, Father. And because, Father, we matter to you, help us to, to matter to ourselves to take the time to, to care for uh, this body, uh, this, this gift that you have given us, Father, to manage it, to, to, to exercise and to and eat healthy and to do those things, Father, that will allow us to be good stewards of this body and live healthy lives and allow us to, to function and to, to do those things that you will call us to do and live for your glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Father, we realize that if it were not for your mercy and your grace, we would not have been able to open our eyes to be able to see and experience a brand new day in this body. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. And Father, help us to use these bodies that you've given us, these, this masterpiece, Father. Help us to use it for your glory and for your honor as we go through this thing. Give us the strength, Father, the wisdom and the courage to fulfill our purpose, the strength to resist uh, the temptations that we'll face today and the challenges. Give us the strength, Father, uh, the wisdom and the courage to push forward and keep on pushing and persevere in spite of the obstacles, in spite of the setbacks that we may be encountering, Father, that we may encounter today. Help us, Father, to keep pushing forward. And Father, we pray, we know that these bodies are crafted from the dirt of the earth. They're earthly. And we know that because they are of the earth, Father, that they have, they decay, these bodies decay. And we have, because of sin, the uh, tendency to get sick and, and, and uh, with disease and viruses and things of that nature. And so we know because you crafted us, Father, and because you care about us, you have the power to heal us. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you on behalf of those whose bodies are, are, are sick this morning filled with disease or, or viruses or ailing right now. Father, we pray that in Jesus' name that you will heal their bodies, restore them back to a normality of health and strength as only you can. We believe you have the power to heal us, Father. We trust and know that you do. And so we're calling on you, Father, to not only heal our bodies, but help us to do the things we need to do to take care of our bodies so that we can be healthy and strong. And Father, we know that you are the God of all comfort. And there are times, Father, when we lose our loved ones, we lose, we suffer loss in this life, Father, and it hurts us because of how you created us with emotions and feelings, and sometimes we, we suffer loss. But Father, in Jesus' name, we're praying for all those who are joining in this prayer right now, those who are uh, in this prayer group and those that we're praying for who have suffered loss. Comfort their spirits, Father, help them to know that whatever you bring us to, that you're more than able to bring us through. Help us not to become discouraged and not to turn back, 
but continue to hold to your unchanging hand. Father, as we go through this day, I just pray uh, for that wisdom again. I pray that you will bless us with the things that we need, Father, in order to be a blessing to, to others. Help us to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify you. Help us to be a, a, a godly influence in our families, in our homes, in our communities, on our jobs, so that the world may know that there is a God and he is alive. Please help us, Father. Help us to exalt you through the lives that we live. And Father, for those who are truly in need, Father, I pray, Father, that you will make a way that you will provide for them the things that they are standing in need of. We know we have a lot of people in this world today who are hurting, who are going without. Uh, we're still in the midst of this pandemic, Father. We just pray uh, that they will find the assistance that they need, Father, in order to make it through uh, this day. And Father, we continue to pray for this nation as we uh, and this world as we continue to go through this pandemic. Father, we pray that uh, you will continue to provide the healing and the direction. This bring us out of this, Father, so we can reunite with our families again and be able to hug one another and to fellowship with one another and even worship together, Father, as we once did. But even better, Father. And when you bring us out, help us to, to remember to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise that you so rightfully deserve. Because if it were not for your grace and your mercy, none of us would be here right now. And those of us, Father, who may have not, uh, may have been sick from the virus or may be sick from it, Father, and, and those who have not had it, help us to realize just how blessed we are. And recognizing that uh, this COVID virus has taken a lot of people off this earth, Father, but the fact that we are still here is a testament to your mercy. And we're ever, forever grateful, Father. Father, help us as we go through this day to honor you, to love you, to exalt you, and to love others as we love ourselves. Thank you, Father, for creating us with purpose and with power. And it's in Jesus' name that we ask this prayer and give thanks. Amen. I am God's masterpiece. And don't you forget it. When we start Monday, I am a child of God. Yesterday, I am more than a conqueror. And today, I am God's masterpiece. I am awesome. You all have a wonderful Wednesday. Stay safe out there. And please make sure you join me again in the morning at 7.30 a.m. for a conversation with God. Have a blessed day.
That's our Rayfield School Bell. The day has begun. Let's get started. It is another wonderful day at Rayfield Family Literacy. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to acknowledge that we are beginning our beautiful, exciting counseling program. We are all excited because we are ready to move forward with our conferencing and counseling and dealing with anxiety, depression, and all of those feelings that we just need to handle. Well, everybody knows that we're in a pandemic, and even if we were not, we still have issues that we have to deal with as human beings. So let's talk about our Rayfield class curriculum for the counseling program over the next quarter. This is April. It is the beginning of the second quarter of the year. And so we have six weeks of activities that will take place in our counseling classes. So I just want to quickly share with you what that's going to be. So during the months of April, May, and June, we will be covering the following topics. We will have tons of tools to help us with feeling confident and coping with different types of emotional stress. For the first week, we're going to deal 
feelings of anger, anxiety, depression, and sad feelings. We're going to manage all of those feelings. So we're going to call it anger management, anxiety management, depression management, fear, and well, fear and sad are basically the same thing, but sad management is what they have here on the curriculum. So that's five days that we will talk during the first week of our counseling therapy about those feelings and coping skills to go along with them. Each class instruction is followed by class objectives, materials pertaining to the level of accommodations for specific students. So what does that mean? You know, everything at Rayfield is person-centered. So that means that I may have some things to talk about with one person and some different things to talk about with another person. Okay, so let's talk about week two. Week two, we're going to talk about appreciation, compassion, kindness, courage, and fairness. That's our curriculum for week two of our coping skills. Week three, we're going to manage confusion. We're going to manage loneliness. We're going to manage frustration. We're going to empower our students to feel confident. And we're going to learn how to deal with surprises in week three. Moving right along to week four. We will learn to identify things that we love about ourselves. Five things that I love about myself is our first order of information and in our first lesson for week four. What does it mean to be respectful is the second lesson. What does it mean to be responsible is the third lesson. What does it mean to be polite? And finally, managing self-discipline. We've heard about that before. That's week four. Moving right along to week five, we're going to learn tips that will help us to be reliable. We're going to learn what it means to be sacrificial, self-sacrifice. Wednesday, which would be of that week, week five, we're going to learn what it means to be accountable. The fourth lesson for week five is how do I control myself? And then the fifth lesson in week five is what does it mean to be committed? Wow. I know that's a mouthful. Five weeks of curriculum in our next quarter. Well, we're already in it. So April, May, and June, we will be learning coping skills and how to deal, develop our character and deal with emotional stress and behavior. I am so excited, guys. As you know, we're gonna be staying later at school. We will be staying two hours later, and we will be learning coping skills. We will be learning anger management and emotional stress. Learning how to be a better person every single day is our goal here at Rayfield. And now that we've moved into our counseling services. We are so excited for all of you that will have the opportunity to participate in these services. So let everybody know you won't be going home at 2 o'clock anymore. You won't be going up to 4 and we're excited to have you here and work on our coping skills and work on our emotional stress and in this great curriculum that we will be learning about. Let's get ready to rumble, guys. It's exciting.
friendly reminder, guys, today is the day that we will be receiving our vaccines here at Rayfield. So let's get ready, get outside to get our vaccine and be thankful that we have it right here at Rayfield. Let's begin with our Wednesday morning prayer. Heavenly Father, for waking us up this morning and letting us see a brand new day, we thank you. You have promised that when we dwell in the secret place of the Most High and shelter under the shadow of your wings, that you would guard and guide us and protect us and keep us. For you are our refuge and our fortress. Please put your hedge of protection around us and place a guard at our doors. Father, keep our hearts from fear and fill us with overflowing love and protection and peace that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's have a great day, Raphael. It's time to get our day started. Good morning, Raphael. It is a wonderful Wednesday here at Raphael, and we're getting our day started. The school bell has rang. How exciting! We are going to be having a lot going on today. Our vaccines will be taking place today here at Rayfield. It is Wonderful Wednesday. We're having music with Mr. Glenn. And of course, all of our wonderful classes and teachers and everybody's here to start us off with a great day. Our theme for this month is Spring Forward at Rayfield. And boy, are we excited about the curriculum, the lessons, and the activities that will take place this month. Guys, let's get ready. When we say Wonderful Wednesday, it is a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. Good morning, Rayfield. It is another wonderful Wednesday. I can even say a wacky wonderful Wednesday here at Rayfield. Wow, we're going to be talking about some very exciting things today. And I want you to know that to one week ago today, we were fortunate enough to have the CDC here for our vaccines. We were fortunate enough to serve 68 people. How exciting, Rayfield, as an agency. The Center for Disease Control and the Broward County Health Department have come together to provide our vaccine and we are so grateful and we're so thankful that they are here to share with us so thank you congratulations ray field as an agency for having this type of support to provide the shots the vaccine for COVID-19, for our community, and for our students here at Rayfield. Good morning. It is Wednesday morning, April the... It is April. 2021. And we're going to get our day started. Today's lesson, and of course, you know, we have life skills lessons all the time. The lesson today is the struggle between good and evil. We're going to talk today for a few minutes about goodness, about just being a downright good person. Being good and exhibiting goodness can be a battleground. Just because you decide to be good doesn't mean that everybody else is going to be good as well. Being good is a lifestyle. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen without a struggle. So don't just think you can wake up one day and say, I'm going to be good and not have any struggle at all. Because we are going to have a struggle when we want to be good. Some days it will be easy and some days it will not. When we choose a lifestyle, it takes time. 
It takes talent. It takes work to obtain those things that we would like to obtain. So let me tell you a little story. One day, a poor little peasant girl came face to face with a statue. She stood and she stared at the statue. And then she went home to wash her face and comb her hair. The next day, she came back to the statue again. And she stared at the statue. And then she did it again. She went home and she washed her face and she combed her hair. This time, she mended her tattered clothing. Day by day, she began to change. She began to form a new and a graceful and a more refined look for herself after looking at the statue each day. Until she greatly reflected the statue herself. She transformed her appearance to look more like the statue. Just so is our everyday life and every day in our learning skills, in our life skills. We transform ourselves every day to look more and more like the person we want to be. Not only physically, but mentally, we challenge ourselves to look more and more internally like the person that we want to be. Many of us who are Christians say this is becoming Christ-like. And those of us who are not so religious say, I'm learning my life skills. Either way it goes, we're growing, we're changing, and we're becoming better. And we're obtaining goodness. It's not a one-day venture. It takes time to obtain goodness. I would like to remind you once more that earlier in the year, January, February, March, we were learning the fruits of the spirits. We learned about self-control. We learned about gentleness. We learned about love. And now we are learning about goodness. It's a process. It is a daily process. It is a commitment. It is a daily discipline, a daily application, a daily significant contribution to our health and well being. Every day, in some small way, in some very significant way, we are changing to become better when we say that we are going to obtain or learn about goodness. The reality is that as we progress, it is a steady kind of thing, slow and steady. We will have our ups and our downs. We will have our good days and our bad days. We will overcome good from evil. It will be a constant struggle, but we will significantly progress day by day. There's a Bible study that talks about the disciple Paul. And one of the things that he says is very true when trying to obtain and learn the life skill of goodness. This particular statement comes from Romans 7, 18, and it states, For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot always carry it out. It is a struggle. Now, it is a struggle is not a part of that scripture. 
let me repeat Paul's statement once again. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot always carry it out. What a profound statement. And what a statement of honesty. I have the desire, but I can't always make it. So one day at a time, I will work toward my goodness. How is it possible for the human being to experience good overcoming evil? For these particular studies, as it relates to goodness, and we're going to continue them, we're going to work to understand how we can fight good with evil. We want to look at our life skills and we want to look at our goodness, the goodness that we have within ourselves, the desire to do better, the desire to learn more, the desire to be a good person. And I know that we all have that desire because every day here at Rayfield, we are working to become a better person. So as we continue to study our different character traits, this one on goodness seems to be one that really hits home. I have the desire to do good, but I cannot always make it. Let's look also at some of the things that we are doing here at Rayfield to become a better person. We are talking about every day our behavior management. We are participating in our guidance counseling. And some of you are working on counseling sessions with Mr. Devon. Some of you ladies are working on counseling sessions with Miss Cassie and more will continue. We will begin in, we will continue to enhance our job skills. We're going to be looking at, of course, on the job training. We do that with our piecework. We're expanding our computer classes. Of course, we do our local tours to businesses here in Hollywood. Most of the time now we do them virtually on Fridays. Remember that I said earlier in the week that this is library month. So we are visiting virtually our libraries and learning more about library media. We are also working on our different video productions. Boy, have we grown in this area. Our virtual tours, our virtual learning, our YouTube, our Facebook, all of the things virtually that we are learning through our technology here at Raytheon. Of course, we have enhanced our pantry jobs. We're just giving and giving and giving to this community. And that being said, today is Wednesday. And on Wednesday now, we give out food to our group homes, our caregivers, and our loved ones. We have been taking food home on our buses and in our cars to those who we want to share with. We have opened the doors of the community here at Rayfield to share with that unique group of people who are friends of Rayfield and who are sharing and caring for us. Let us move forward, Rayfield. Let, Let us continue. continue on this Wednesday, April 14th, as we take our vaccine, as we share our food to this community and to our caregivers. This is a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. And as you know, we are also working on the fact today that we are doing our vaccines, as I stated, and we will be moving forward with more vaccines on Saturday for the community. So for those of you who have not had the vaccine or those of you who need the vaccine, it is also available on Saturday. Again, guys, let's have a wonderful Wednesday. We know that there's a lot going on at Rayfield all the time. We are COVID-free. The vaccine is here. We are 
Ray feels strong, and we are springing forward in April. Have a great day, guys. Before I close out today, I have to give a shout out to some special people. As you can see behind me, that's Miss Vargas, Patricia Vargas, John, uh, Jimmy's mom, did a great job with helping us with the pantry. And here's Miss Wilma. Miss Wilma is our former pantry person who stopped by this weekend and left the donation for our students. Thank you, Miss Wilma. Good morning or afternoon, Rayfield family. Here are your weather forecasts for this week. Monday, partly to mostly cloudy with a chance of thunderstorms. High 86, wind south-southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, chance of rain 40%. Tuesday, sun and clouds mixed with a slight chance of thunderstorms during the afternoon. High 87, wind south southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, chance of rain 30%. Wednesday, partly to mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. High 86, wind southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour, chance of rain 40%. Thursday, intervals of clouds and sunshine. High 81. Wind north northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Friday. Except for a few afternoon clouds, mainly sunny. High around 80. Wind east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Saturday. Partly cloudy. High 84. Wind southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Sunday. A mix of cloud and sun with the chance of an isolated thunderstorm in the afternoon. High around 85. Wind south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chance of rain 30%. Monday. Intervals of cloud and sunshine. High 83. Wind southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. These are your weather forecast for this week. Keep your umbrella handy because some days we will have some rain in the forecast. Make sure that you keep yourself updated with the latest weather forecast 
as it will change from time to time by watching it from your television or listening from your radio or from any devices that carries their weather, weather app. Thank you for tuning in and may you have a productive week. See you later. to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the So gallantly streaming, and the rocket red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag. Still there, oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the Nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Please pray along with me as we go to the Lord in prayer, going to Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Thank you.
The resurrection of Jesus took everybody by surprise. The disciples weren't expecting it. They knew perfectly well if you followed somebody who you thought was the Messiah and he got killed, then that was it. We know of at least a dozen other messianic or prophetic movements within the hundred years either side of Jesus. They routinely ended with the death of the founder. Um, and if, they, if the movement wanted to continue, they didn't say, oh, he's been raised from the dead. They said, let's find his brother or his cousin or somebody who can carry on this movement. We can see how those Jewish groups did that. This one did it differently. They had James, the brother of Jesus, as this great leader in the early church. Nobody said James was the Messiah. They said Jesus was the Messiah. Why? He's dead. He, they, they got him. Didn't you realize they crucified him? No, he was raised from the dead. The only way you can explain why Christianity began and why it took the very precise shape it was is, let's say it cautiously first, they really did believe he was bodily raised from the dead. And then if you take the second question and say, why would they believe that? You can go through all the theories that they found themselves forgiven, that they had a fresh sense of the presence of God, that this was cognitive dissonance, etc. And you bring all those theories to the actual facts that we know on the ground from the first century. They just don't fit. The only way you can explain the rise of the early Christian belief that Jesus was raised is that there really was an empty tomb, they really did meet Jesus alive again in a transformed body, and the thing makes sense. Of course, when I wrote a big book on this, my philosophy tutor from Oxford, who was an atheist, um, uh, read it, and he said, great book, you really make the argument, he said, I simply choose to believe that there must be some other explanation even though I don't know what it was. I said, fine, that's as far as I can take you. I can't bully you into saying, therefore, you must believe, because to do that requires a change of worldview. But once you change the worldview and say, maybe there really is a creator God, and maybe this creator God really is sorting out this sad old world at last, then everything else makes sense in a way that it doesn't with any other possibility.
Hello. Good morning. How's everyone today? It is Wednesday. It is story time with Miss Amanda. I hope everyone had a good week. Today we will continue to read the story Shallop's Well. Last week, we ended the story when everyone spent the day at the county fair, having so much fun. They all went home to rest up so they can attend the fair the next day. This week, we will learn if Wilbur won any prizes did he win any ribbons or did he win any medals at that kind of fair? Sit back, everyone, and let's listen to the story, Charlotte's Web, by E.B. White. The chapter we will read today is called The Egg Psych. Anyone know what an egg psych is? It's a psych that holds eggs. So let's begin. The next morning, when the first light came into the sky and the sparrows stirred in the trees and when the cows rattled their chains and when the rooster crowed and the earth when the automobiles was riding up and down the roads, Wilbur awoke and he looked for Charlotte. He saw her up overhead in a corner near the back of the pen. She was very quiet. Her eight legs were spread wide. She seemed to have shrunk during the night. Next to her are was attached to the ceiling. Wilbur saw a curious looking object. It was a sort of psych or a cocoon. It was peach color and it was it looked it as though it was made of cotton candy. Are you awake, Charlotte? He said softly. Yes, came the answer. What is that nifty looking thing I'm looking at? Did you make it? I did indeed, replied Charlotte in a weak voice. Is it a plaything? A plaything? Wilbur that Charlotte asked. I shall sure say not. It is my egg sight. My magnificent. Opro. I don't know what a magnet opro is, said Wilbur. That's Latin, explained Charlotte. It means great work. That is my great work. The egg site is my great work and is the finest thing I have ever made. What's inside of it? Wilbur asked. Eggs replied Charlotte. 514 of them. Wow! Charlotte had 514 eggs in that site. Woo! You are kidding me, Wilbur said. No, I'm not kidding. I counted them all. I got start counting, so I kept on. Just to keep my mind occupied. It's a perfect, beautiful egg site, said Wilbur, feeling as happy as though he had he had constructed it himself. Yes, it is pretty, replied Charlotte, putting the site with her two front eggs, she pushed it a little. Anyway, I can can't grant guarantee. It is strong. It's made out of the toughest material I have. It is also waterproof. The eggs are inside 
And those eggs is going to stay dry. They are going to stay warm and dry. Charlotte said, Wilbur, dreamily, are you really going to have 514 children? If nothing happened, yes, she said. Of course, they won't show up till next spring. Wilbur noticed that Charlotte voice sounded sad. What make you sound so downhearted? I should think you'll be terribly happy about this. Oh, don't pay my pay me any attention, said Charlotte. I just don't have much pep anymore. I guess I feel sad because I won't even see my children. What do you mean you won't see your children? Of course you will. Well, all seen, we are all see them. It's going to be simple, wonderful next spring in the barn. With 514 baby spiders running around all over the place. And the geese will have a new set of goblins. And the sheep will have new lambs. Maybe, said Charlotte quietly. However, I have a feeling I am not going to see the results of the last night efforts. I don't feel good at all. I think I am lingering to tell you the truth. Wilbur didn't understand the word linger. And he had to bother Charlotte by asking her to explain. But he was so worried he felt he had to ask. He didn't want to bother Charlotte, but he did not understand that word language. What does languishing mean? It means I am slowing up, feeling my age. I am not young anymore, Wilbur, but I don't want you to worry about me. This is your big day today. Look at my well. Doesn't it show up well with the dew on it? Charlotte Webb never looked it more beautiful than he looked it this morning. Each grand had dozens of bright drops of early morning dew on them. The light from the the light from the east. Struck it until it made it all plain and clear. It was perfect piece of designing. In the building, it was perfect too. In another hour or two, a steady scream of people will pass by. And they will be admiring it and reading it and looking at Wilbur and marveling at that miracle. As Wilbur was studying the well, a pair of whispers and a sharp face appeared. Slowly, Tempton dragged himself across the pen and threw himself down in a corner. I am back, he said in a husky voice. What a night! The rat was swollen. <laughs> the rat was swollen twice around his normal size. His stomach was as big around as a jelly jaw. Tempton had gained weight. He was all puffed up from the night before. Because we all know River, not River, but we all know. That Tempton was running around that fair eating everything he could eat. Because that is what rats do. What a night he repeated. What feast. What a feast. A real George. I must have eaten 
the remains of dirty lunches. Never have I seen such leaving in everything well re rewritten. And I season with a passion of time and the heat of the day. Oh, it was rich. My friends, it was rich. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, says Charlotte in disgust. It will serve you right if you had an, a type of an indigestion. Don't worry about my stomach, said Shelton. It can handle anything. And by the way, I've got some bad news. As I came past the pig next door, the one that said his name is Uncle, I noticed a blue tag on the front of his pen. That mean he had won first prize. I guess you'll lick, Wilbur. I guess Uncle have beaten you. He have a first place ribbon on his pen. You might as well relax. Nobody is going to hang any medals on you, Father Moore. I'd rather be surprised if Zuckerman change his mind about you. Wait till he gets hang hacking for some fresh pork and smoked ham and crispy bacon. He'll take that knife to you, my boy. He be still tempting, says Charlotte. You are too stuffed and bloated to know what you are saying. Don't pay any attention to him, Wilbur. Wilbur tried not to think about what the rat has just said, and he decided to change the subject. Tempton said, Wilbur, if you wasn't so dopey, you would have noticed that Charlotte has made an egg site. An uh, egg site, she is going to become a mother. For your information, there are 514 eggs in that peachy little site. Is this true? Asked the rat, looking up at the site surprisingly. Yes, it's true, signed Charlotte. Well, congratulations, Mama Tempton. This, this has been a night. He closed his eyes, pulled some scrawl over himself, and he dropped off in a deep sleep. Wilbur and Charlotte were glad to be rid of that rat for a while. At nine o'clock, Mr. Arbel rolled into the fairground and came up to a stop at Wibble Pen. Everybody clammed out. Look, cried Fern. Look at Charlotte's web. Look what it says. The grown-ups and the children jumped hand in hand and stood there, studying the word. That was in that well. Humble, said Mr. Zuckerman. Well, isn't that just the word for Wilbur? Everyone rejoiced to find that the miracle of the web have been repeated. Wilbur gazed up lovingly into their faces. He looked very humble. And very grateful. Fern winked at Charlotte. Levi soon got busy. He poured a bucket of warm slop into the throat. And why Wilbur? And why Wilbur ate his breakfast? Levi scraped him, scratched him gently with a 
smooth stick. Wait a minute, cried Abel. Look at this. He's pointing to the blue tag on Uncle's pen. This pig has won first place already. The Zucumas and the Arbor gazed at the tag. Miss Zucuma began to cry. Nobody said a word. They just stared at that tag that was pinned on Uncle's pen. Then they stared at Uncle. Then they stared at that tag again. Levi took out an handkerchief and he blew his nose very loud. So loud in fact that the noise was heard by stable boys all over the horse's barn. Can I have some money, as Fern? I want to go out on the midway. You stay right where you are, said Mother. Tears came to firm eyes. What everybody crying about, asked Mr. Zucuma. Let's get busy. Edith, bring that buttermilk. Miss Zucuma wiped her eyes with her handkerchief. She went to the truck and she came back with a gallon of buttermilk. Bath time, said the Zucuma. Cheerfully, he and Miss Zucuma and Abel climbed into Wilbur's pen. Abel slowly poured buttermilk on Wilbur's head and on his back. And as it trickled down his side and his cheeks, Mr. and Mrs. Zucuma rubbed it. They rub it into his hair and into his skin. People's passing by stopped to watch. They watched as Wibble was being bathed by that buttermilk. Pretty soon, quite a crowd had gathered. Wibble grew beautifully white and smooth. The morning sun shined through his pink ears. He isn't as big as the pig next door, remarked one of the bystanders, but he's the cleanest, and that's what I like. So do I, said another man. He's humble too, said a woman, reading the sign over the well. Everybody who visited the pig pen had a good word to say about river. Everyone admired the web. And, of course, nobody noticed Charlotte. Attention, please. A voice suddenly came over the loudspeaker. And the voice said, Will, the, will Mr. Homo Zucuma bring his famous pig to the judge booth in front of the grandstand? A special award will be made there in 20 minutes. Everyone is invited to attend. Create, create your pig, please, Mr. Zucuma and report to the judge booth at once. For a moment after the announcement, the Arbor and the Zucuma was unable to speak. I was unable to move. Then Abel picked up a handful of scrawl and he threw it high up into the sky. And he gave a loud yell with it. The scrawl fluttered down and like confronted in two firm hair. Mr. Zucuma hugged Miss Zucuma. Mr. Arbor kissed Miss Arbor. Abel kissed Wilbur. Levi shook hands with everybody. Firm hugged her mother. And Abel hugged Fern. 
Miss Arbel hugged Mrs. Zuckerman. Everyone was hugging and everyone was so happy because they knew that Wilbur had won a prize. Up overhead in the shadow of the ceiling, Charlotte, she was unseen, hid from her legs, encircled her eggs. Her heart was not beating as strongly as usual, and she felt weary and old, but she was sure at last that she had saved Wilbur's life, and she felt peacefully and she felt content. We have no time to waste, shouted Mr. Zuckerman. Levi, help me with this crate. Can I have some money, Firm asked. You wait, said Mrs. Arbor. Can't you see everyone is busy? Put that empty buttermilk jar into the truck, commanded Mr. Arbor. Abel grabbed the jaw and rushed to the truck. Does my hair look all right, asked Miss Zuckerman. Looks fine, snapped Mr. Zuckerman, as he and Levi set the crate down in front of Wilbur. You didn't even look at my hair, said Miss Zuckerman. You are all right, Edith, said Miss Arbor. Just keep Calm. Tempting asleep in the scroll, he heard all this commotion and awoke. He didn't know exactly what was going on, but when he saw the men shoving Wilbur into the crate, he made up his mind to go and help. He watched and he his chance, and when no one was looking, he Creep into the crate and he buried himself in the scroll at the bottom of that crate. All right, boys, said Mrs. Zuckerma, Mr. Zuckerma, let's go. He and Mr. Arbel and Levi and Abel grabbed the crate and they boosted it over the side of the pen and up into the truck. Fern jumped aboard and sat on top of the crate. She still had straw in her hair and looked it very pretty and she looked it very excited. Mr. Arbor started the motor. Everyone clammed in and off they drove to the judge's booth in front of the grandstand. And they passed the Ferris wheel Firm gazed up and it and she gazed up at it and she wished she was in that topmost car with her friend Henry Fussy at her side. The hour of Trump special announcement said the loudspeaker in a prompt voice. The management of the fair. Take great pleasure in presenting Mr. Homer L. Zuckerman and his famous pig. The truck bearing this extraordinary animal is now approaching the envy. Kindly stand back and give the truck room to proceed. In a few moments, the pig will be unloaded in the special judging ring in front of the grandstand, where a special award will be made. With the crowd, please stand back and make way and let the truck pass through. Thank you. Wilbur trembled 
when he heard this speech. He felt happy, but he felt dizzy. The truck creep along slowly in low speed. Cries of people surrounded it, and Mr. Arbor had to drive very carefully in order not to hit anyone. At last, he managed to reach the judge stand. Abel jumped out and lowered the tailgate. I'm scared to death, whispered Mrs. Zukuma. Hundreds of people are looking at us. Cheer up, replied Miss Arbor. This is so much fun. So cheer up. Unload your pig, please, said the loudspeaker. All together. Now, boy, said Mrs. Mr. Zuckerman. Several men stepped forward from the crowd to help lift the crate. Abel was the busiest help of all. Tuck your shirt in, Abel, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Tighten that belt. Your pants is coming down. Can't you see I'm busy, replied Abel in disgust. Look, cried Fern, pointing. There's Henry. Don't shout, Fern, said her mother. And don't point. Can I please have some money, as Fern. Henry invited me to go on the Ferris wheel again. Only I don't think he have any money left. And he ran out of money yesterday. Miss Arbor opened her handbag. Here, she said, he is 40 cent. Now don't get lost and be back at our regular meeting place by the pig pen very soon. Fern raced off, ducking and dodging through the crowd in search of Henry. Miss Zuckerman the Zuckerma pig is now being taken from his crate. Bomb the voice of the last speaker. Stand by for an announcement. Tempton crunched under the straw at the bottom of the crate. What a lot of nonsense, Mama the Rat. What a lot of fuss about nothing. Over in the pig pen, Silent and alone, Charlotte rested. Her two front legs embraced the egg site. Charlotte could hear everything that was going on. She could hear everything that they were saying over that loud speaker. The words gave her courage. This was her hour of triumph. As Wilbur came out of the crate, the crowd clapped and they cheered. Mr. Zuckerman took off his cap and he bowed. Levi pulled his big handkerchief from his pocket and he wiped the sweat from the back of his neck. Abel knelt in front of the dirt by Wilbur's side. Busily stroking him and showing off. Miss Zuckerma said, Miss Arbor, they stood up on the running board of the truck. Ladies and gentlemen, said the loudspeaker, we are now present Mr. Homer L. Zuckerma. Distinguished pig, the fame of this unique animal has spread it in the far corners of the earth, attracted many tourists to our great state. Many of you will recall that never to be forgotten day last summer. When the writing appeared mysteriously 
on the spider's web. Last summer, you guys remember when the word some pig was weaved into the web of Charlotte. It called attention to everyone everywhere. Yes, Mr. Zuckerman Bond calling the attention to all, all, and Sandra to the face that this pig was completely out of the ordinary. This miracle has never been fully explained. Although learned men had visited the Zuckerman pig pen to study and observe this phenomenon's pig. In the last analyst, we simply know that we are dealing with supernatural force here. And we shall all feel proud and grateful. In the word of the spider web, ladies and gentlemen, this is some pig. This is some pig. Weber blush. He stood perfectly still. And he tried to look his best. The beneficent animal continued the live speaker. It's truly terrific. Look at him, ladies and gentlemen. Note the smoothness and the whiteness of the coat. Observe the spotless skin. The healthy pink glow on ears and snark. It's the buttermilk, whispered Mrs. Arbor to Mrs. Zukuma. Note the gentle radiance of his, his animal. Then remember the day when the word radiant appeared clearly over the well. Where well came the mysterious writing? Not from the spider. We can rest assured that spiders are very clever at weaving. They can weave their webs, but nevertheless, you know to say, spiders can't write. Oh, they can't. Huh. Mama Charlotte to herself. Ladies and gentlemen, continue the last speaker. I must not take any more of your valuable time. On behalf of the governor of the fair, I have the honor of awarding a special prize of $25 to Mr. Zuckerman. Together with a handsome bronze medal engraved in token of an appreciation of the part played by the pig. This radiant, this terrific, this humble pig is attracting so many visitors to our great county fair. Wilbur have been feeling dizzy and dizzier through this long complimental speech. When he heard the crowd begin to cheer and clap again, he suddenly fainted. He fainted. He could not stand the excitement of everybody cheering and clapping for him. So Wilbur fainted. His legs collapsed, his mind was blank, and he fell to the ground unconscious. What's wrong? Asked the live speaker. What's going on, Zukuma? What's the trouble with your pig? Abel was kneeling down by Wilbur's head, stroking him. Mr. Zukuma was dancing about, fanning him with his cap. He's all right, cried Mr. Zukuma. He get this spell. He's modest and can't stand praises. He can't stand when people praise him like that. Well, we can't give a prize to a dead pig, said the live speaker. 
It's never been done before. He isn't dead, hollered Zukuma. He's fainted. He get embarrassed very easy. Run for some water, Levi. Levi sprang to his feet from the judge's ring, and he disappeared. Tempton poked his head from that scroll. He noticed the end of Wilbur's tail was without reach. Tempton grinned. He grinned because Tempton had something going on in his head at that time. I tend to this, he chuckled. He took Wilbur Tail in his mouth and he bit it just as hard as he could. He bit Wilbur on the tail. The pain revived Wilbur. In a flash, he was back on his feet. Ouch! He screamed. Hooray! Yeah, the cry. He's up! Everybody yell, yeah, he's up! The pig is up. Good work, Zukuma. That's some pig. Everybody was delighted. Mr. Zukuma was the most pleased of all. He signed it with relief. Nobody had seen Tempton. The rat had done his work well. At one note on the judge. As the judge clammed into the ring with the prizes, he handed Mr. Zukuma two $10 bills and a $5 bill. Then he tried the medal around Wilbur's neck. He hung the medal around Wilbur's neck. Then he shook hands with the Zukuma while Wilbur was blushing. Abel put out his hand, and the judge shook Abel's hand, too. A photographer took Wilbur's picture. A great feeling of happiness swept over the Zukuma and the Arvos. This was the greatest moment in the Zukuma's life. It is deeply satisfying to win prizes in front of a large crowd of people. As Wilbur was being shoved back into the crate, Levi came charging through the crowd, carrying a pail of water. His eyes had a wide look in him. Without hesitation, a second, he dashed the water on Wilbur. And in his excitement, he missed Wilbur entirely and the water splashed all over Mr. Zukuma and Abel. This got, they got soaking wet. For goodness sake, Mr. Zukuma, who was really drenched. What else, you Levi? Can't you see that that pig is all right? You asked for water, said Levi. I didn't ask for a shower and a bath, said Mr. Zukuma. The crowd rolled with lobster. Finally, Mr. Zukuma had to love himself. And of course, Abel was tickled to find himself wet also. And immediately started to act like a clown. Abel began to act like a clown. He was soaking wet. You know, Abel always had jokes. He pretended he was taking a shower and a bath. He made faces and he danced around and rubbed imaginary soap under his armpit. And when they dried himself with an imaginary towel, Abel, stop it, cried his mother. Stop showing off. But he, the crowd loved it there. Abel heard nothing but applauses. He liked it being a clown in a ring with everybody watching his front of a grandstand. Everybody was watching in front of the grandstand. When he discovered there was still a little water left in that bucket, <laughs> 
he raised the pail high in the air and he dumped the water on himself and he made all kind of faces. The children in the grandstand screamed and they screamed with appreciation. At last, come down, Wilbur was loaded into the truck. Ava had led from the ring by the mother and placed on the seat of the truck to drive off. The truck driver, Mr. Arbor, crawled slowly back to the pig pen. Ava, wet trousers, made a big wet spot on the front seat of Mr. Arvo's truck. This will end the story this week. Charlotte's Well. Did you guys enjoy that story? Did you see that Mr. Zuckerman, he won my money, $25 for a prize for the pig? The pig won a medal that they hung around his neck? I tell you, that is some pig Mr. Zuckerman had. They enjoyed themselves that day at that fair more than the day before. Everyone was so excited. Everyone was so happy that they had won a prize. The pig, Wilbur, had won a prize. Yeah. Wow. So the end of the story this week, we will be ending the story Charlotte's Web next week. <laughs> the story will be ending next week, guys. Yes, Charlotte Web will be coming to an end. So next week, don't forget, come back. You don't want to miss how this story is going to end. If you're like me, I am so very excited. I'm waiting to see how Charlotte's Web ends. Charlotte's Web was written by E.B. White. So again, I said, see you guys next week. So come back on Wednesday. Same time. Come back for story time with Miss Amanda. See you. Love you. Can't wait to see you. And I can't wait to see how this story ends. Have a great week. Come back. Bring your popcorns. Love you. Hello, how are you? Today I want to speak with you a little about the Bill of Rights. Your Bill of Rights. There are 16 Bill of Rights here at Rayfield that is written. These rights are for you here at Rayfield and for you to carry out in the world with you. There are 16. One bill of rights is the bill of right to vote. And you all know, November 3rd, we will be voting for our leaders of the nation. If you are a registered voter, you have the right to vote. You have a right to have your voice heard by voting. The second bill of right is the right to see a doctor. You have the right to go to church. You have a right to humor disciplines. You have a right for community outings. 
and you have a right to talk. Students, you have a right to an education and you have a right to refuse treatment. You have a right to privacy and dignity. You have a right to make money. You have a right to exercise. You also have a right to see your records. No one has the right to keep your records from you if you want to see them. Seeing your records is one of your rights and you have that right to see your record. There is a right to own possessions. You have a right to receive service. You have a right to no discrimination. No one can discriminate against you for a disability. No one. You have a right to no discrimination. And you have a right to no physical harm. No one have the right to harm you in any way. Students, learn your Bill of Rights and try to learn all of them. Because knowing your rights plays a big part in your life. Your right, your Bill of Rights will teach you what you can do and what people cannot do to you. So it is very important to learn every one of your Bill of Rights because it is your life. Have a great evening and learn everything you can about what is for you and what is against you. What's supposed to happen to you and what not supposed to happen to you. It's your life and you got control of your life.